Rashid Nezmedinov, the most aggressive chess player of all time. He plays outrageous chess. He starts the game off with the white pieces and plays d4. And here we get into what is called a Grunfeld's defense. After e4, the idea is that black gives up the center to the white pieces and then plays c5 to attack it and distort the pawn structures. Nezmedinov plays straight away with an aggressive bishop b5. I just want to say before we continue, this is Nez's worst move of the game, per game review. This is an excellent move, and that doesn't cut it. This is the standard we're playing at today. Bishop b5 check. Okay, black has several different options. Bishop d7 to block, knight d7 to block, or knight c6. And he plays the worst option, I will admit. But it's, it's a light bad move, right? Nezmedinov doubles down and goes d5. Attacks this pinned knight on the king. And really... Black has to play one move here, and it's a6, right? To attack the bishop that is forcing the pin on the knight that's attacked, right? If you take the knight, then I'll take your bishop, and this is completely fine for the black pieces, even slightly winning. But black put, makes, makes another mistake here and plays queen a5. It looks like a really, really nice move, right? The queen is attacking this bishop, attacking this pawn. Some would even call this a fork. Right, and is preparing another fork on the white pieces, but he missed Nez's move, queen a4. A really great move to triple down on the attack on this pinned knight and, oopsie daisy, give outright the c3 pawn. Really interesting. And this begs the question, what happens if you do take the c3 pawn? Well, thankfully, we don't even have to ask. It was played in the game. Because otherwise, if you just take this queen and I take back, the trade does not work because we get into an endgame and you're safe there. But what matters is that I have your knight in handcuffs in this endgame. The knight is pinned and I'm just taking it next move and it's over. You can play any games, but I'll just take. And if you attack my bishop again, I'll just take this and fork uh, your king and rook. So it's not possible. They take on c3 and the queen is, as it's doing, putting a fork, putting on a show, forking my king and my rook. Well, now Nez says, okay. <sighs> I think the black pieces expected bishop d2. The problem with this move is that it allows queen takes a1, and we're down a rook and it's check, and the king has to move, and now, okay, my knight is in trouble, but black has time to escape. The exile of this king is imminent. Bishop g7, you take here your threatening discoveries all over the place on my king, but black flees in time with castles. And now the damages are only minor, right? If you push on c7, it's the same. And black finds himself with a rook up. So this was not a possibility for Nez to consider him being the white pieces. He played the very, very bold move, king e2. Incredibly incredibly strong. This is a giga chad king right here. King e2 gives this rook on a1 with no check. No treat. If you take on a1, you get the consequences of my pawn taking your knight. And now I'm not just threatening d takes b7 with a little check and winning a rook and making another queen much better than that. I'm threatening c7, let's say a dumb move, c7, discover check on this king, bishop d7, and we take with checkmate. So this is not a walk in the park. King d8 is kind of forced to take up that c7 square, what an awkward move by the way, and it would be losing. So, the black pieces here played bishop d7. Now, the best move here was just like bishop g7, and then we castle, and it's completely fine, right? We get to escape again on time, and no harm, no foul, just a small advantage for the white pieces after they get to shelter their rook and threaten bishop b2. But here, this is where the mistake lies. The defense contending this diagonal is the big mistake here. And here, Nez finds a move that the engine on depth 14, which means the engine looking 14 moves out in the future, did not find. In fact, the engine just says, take your chips and go home, knight f3 is better, advantage. But no, Nez plays a move that the engine doesn't find, d takes c6. And you're threatening a dozen things, taking this bishop, taking this, and all, all the well-being, you're sacrificing your rook on a1. Incredible. 
His opponent takes back because we all know that if you take, you're going to be in trouble. I'm just taking here with triple threats on this. I mean, rook here, check, rook here, checkmate. It's not fun. Nobody wants to go through that. And so his opponent abides, takes on c6. We take back. And it's really a game of who's taking whose rook first or last. <laughs> in this position, black s shelters their, their rook first. Okay, rook d8. But he missed a really, really crazy move here. The white pieces play the only winning move in this position, and at that, a brilliant move that is so obscure and so unfindable that it just leaves you without speech. I was left without speech when I saw this game. I'm gonna admit it to you. He played queen b3. A brilliant move that does not sacrifice the queen. <laughs> Sacrifices the rook, though. And, you know, black end up taking, so we'll not, uh, we won't look at this right now, but let's look at other things. It's a queen move, proposing a queen trade. Why is this brilliant? Because if you take my queen, it is not a queen trade. I can save my extra bishop, because white are a piece up. Remember, we won a piece on c6. I can save my bishop by doing bishop takes d7, check on the king. You have to take my bishop with a rook or a king, does not matter. And now I take back the queen and I retain my knight up. So that is not possible. Okay, you can take my bishop. No, you can't. I'm just taking your queen. And then third of all, you can take my rook on a1. And this is where, again, it's so brilliant that it just leaves you with just awe. The queen takes a1 is a really interesting variation because it doesn't just trap the queen. Instead, anyways, not yet, right? There's bishop b2 first, great move. Forces queen b1, otherwise the queen has no other square. So queen b1 is forced. And now ensues what I would call a discovered attack, but it just looks like a dumb move. There is a fine line between brilliant and dumb in chess, and that is calculation. And here it is. Knight f3 was played. Oh my god. Incredible. Knight f3 sacrifices not one, but a second rook. Like as if you're at a buffet. Here's a rook, here's another rook, you can take a third rook, I'll make a third rook and give it to you. Homemade's on the house. If you take this rook, which they did in the game. Okay, first of all, the black piece is taking way too much material. There's something about greediness in chess. Don't be greedy in chess unless you calculate very, very well. But yes, this queen is trapped, so you kind of do have to take the rook. So queen takes h1 is kind of forced. Why do we do this? Why did we give a rook? For tempo, we want time. We want another piece in this attack as fast as we can. Knight f3 and then knight e5. And now we are threatening that bishop, but also we're threatening checkmate on f7. It's very hard to defend this. The best move, says the engine, is to play queen d1, giving the queen two ways. <laughs> That's how bad this is for the black pieces. We're threatening mate. How do you defend mate? Not with bishop e6. This bishop is pinned. Not with rook h7, that would be illegal. And not with castles, because black have not developed anything since the beginning of this game. Look at their position. So black plays the only move that looks defendable, and it looks like e6 is played. It blocks the queen, and okay, we don't have mate there. But that's not all. We have this bishop that's now attacked twice, and this can be served to open up the king, and that's what Nez does here. Bishop takes d7. Okay, so rook takes. The best move was king e7, and after queen b7, it's still completely over. We have a dozen discovered checks on this king, and then it's just completely, let's not talk about it. It's similar than what happened in the game. Here, after bishop takes d7 check, rook takes, and now Supernez finds a forced checkmate in nine moves. Kinda crazy. Kinda crazy. If you want to try to solve it, go at it, but it will probably hurt your brain. Here it is white to play and checkmate in nine moves. Pause the video to solve the problem. Nez played queen b8 check. So here, you're either forcing king e7, which would lead to checkmate in one, discovered checkmate, disgusting, let's not go further into that, or rook d8, which was played in the game. 
And now we continue with queen b5. You see, we have now opened up this diagonal. The queen comes from b3. And now we are forcing the king up into the game. You cannot defend here because we take with checkmate. So king e7. And now white plays queen b7 check. So again, we have opened up this line on the king. You cannot block again because we'll take. And this forces the king to go up again. If you go to d6, which was not played in the game, here white has knight takes f7 checkmate. So the king was kind of forced to go to f6 and flee exiled king out of his own kingdom. Very sad. Nez ensues with the only move that looks like it's a move. It's queen takes f7 check, defended by the knight and forcing the king once again to move up the board. That's always a good sign in chess. The more your king moves up towards me, the more my pawns take more of these squares and more likely increase the chances of this king being checkmated. Okay, so here Nez continues on with the attack. You have certain candidate moves, right? F4 is possible, H4 is possible, but he finds this really hard move. In fact, Ivanchuk said this type of move is the hardest move to find in chess. It's the knight going backwards. And I believe this is where his opponent missed it, because this is very hard to find in calculation. The knight going backwards, inflicting check on this king. And since our queen holds up all these squares and the knight holds up these two, the king is forced to only three squares here. And what do you do? Okay, let's look at him. So if the king goes to h6, here we have queen f4. And we can do this because our bishop takes up, like a diaper, takes up that last square and forces the king up. King up queen g5 checkmate, or g5 and queen takes g5 checkmate. So the king h6 does not work, unfortunately. What was played was king h5, so we'll leave that for last. King g4 also loses to queen takes e6 check, and then king h5, and then we have checkmate all the way down here on h3. It's very ironic how this queen is kind of imprisoned while this queen is just, you know, cheating on her husband. Okay, so the king went to h5, and now we have g4. You're sacrificing material to attract the king towards you. This is called a decoy. I have a video on 10 tactics of 10 different levels on this. It will be right here. The king can take this pawn with king takes g4, and now we have queen takes e6 check. Okay, as mentioned previously, if the king goes here, we have checkmate. So the king went on to f4, a new square, and now Nez Finish the, finishes the job of, with bishop e5 check. And you're asking yourself, why does he stop defending his own pawn? Well, that's the goal. Again, you're attracting the king to this square, and it's forced. So the king has to take, and the king has really no squares here. This is what we call a mating net in chess. The king is in a net of mates surrounding himself. And there's checkmate like five different ways here. Any bishop move along this diagonal is checkmate. Any bishop move here is checkmate. Not along this diagonal, you have to take up f4. So anything like this is checkmate. It's a buffet of checkmates. I should just call this video buffet of checkmates, but we're not going to do that. Respect to his opponent, Luzikal. Here, White finished it off with a pure knight g5 checkmate. And that is a 99 accuracy chess game with five great moves and two brilliant moves. Absolute disgraceful for his opponent. I don't play chess for a month after this if I have the black pieces and I play chess till 6 a.m. on chess.com with the white pieces with the white pieces if I play this. So I hope you have a marvelous day and I hope this game made you feel better about yourself that you can do this too or you maybe have done this <laughs> anyways have a great day please like and share this video or don't do any of those just sub and be private with it i understand see you soon thank you so much